All right, we're going to take a look at geometry. The first part of geometry is measuring area. Area counts the number of squares it takes to cover something. Take a look at these squares as you lay them flat. Floor tiles count as area. Anything where squares can be laid to count the area, even if it's a round object. When you count with squares, you have to remember squares are a two-dimensional object, so in theory they're flat. They measure length and width, that's it. Now take a look at volume. Volume measures how much it takes to fill something. It doesn't count with squares, it counts with cubes. So if I would take these cubes and stack them up, it's finding volume. Volume fills space. Area only covers it. Volume has three dimensions, length, width, and height, or thickness. Here's another example of volume, just a plain shoebox. Remember, volume fills a space with a cube. If I took these clear cubes, I can stack them in and figure out how many I would need to fill up the length, the width, and the height of it. The last type of measurement we want to look at is surface area. Surface area is regular area. How many squares does it take to cover an object? But you're covering every side of the object or every face. So not only do you need the area of the top of the shoebox, you need the area of every side. Now it's hard to do this with one hand while I'm holding the other to film this, but you lay some squares across the top lay some squares across the side, and you would get the idea of figuring out how many squares it would take to go around this object. And yes, even the bottom as well. A lot of people forget the bottom, but yes, you would have to figure out how much cardboard it would take to make the box, or you could figure out how much wrapping paper it takes. We're going to be starting our new unit on volume and along with other geometry things. But I want to be real clear about volume. When we count volume, it's not necessarily in feet or in meters. The most important thing about counting volume is that you are counting how many cubes does it take to fill an object. That's what it takes into account. So if you take a look at this object, you see that it is a big cube made of many, many small cubes. If I want to find the volume, I could count every single cube. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can count every single one. Now luckily we have math formulas to speed this up. I can multiply length, width, height, depending on the shape of the object. But it's very important to understand when we are doing volume, it is simply counting how many cubes does it take to fill up an object. This website does a nice idea to show the different cubes. If I would look at this object, I could say, what's the volume? Now I would have to count every single one. Volume is the number of cubes it takes to fill an object. Let's take a look at this site. This simply says, what is the volume? How many cubes do I have? I have two. How many cubes do I have? What is the volume? One, two, three, four. I have four. What is the volume? Three, three gives me six. What is the volume? A little bit more to count. You take a second and count. You tell me what the volume is. I think I have nine as well. A little bit
little bit more involved. What people make the mistake of now is they count only the ones they see. You have to remember if this is raised off the ground, there's one under it. Take a second and count. What is the volume? How many cubes does it take to make this object? I think I have nine as well. Last one, what is the volume? I agree with 14. I am starting with the cube to talk about the volume because that's the basis of volume, is the cube. How many cubes does it take to fill an object? I can't say that enough because people get so wrapped up in the formulas they forget what you're actually counting. <coughs> Excuse me, it's how many little cubes does it take? Here is a cube. All right, now let's take a look at the pieces of a cube. You want to write these down. There's faces, there's vertices, which is plural for a vertex, and there are edges. So if I can get my marker to work, which I think I can, let's take a look at faces. Faces are any flat side of the object. So if I would look, this left side is a face. This front side is a face. The top is a face. How many faces does a cube have? I only see three right now, but you have to remember there are others. How many? There's one on the right side, there's one in the back, and there's one on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Every single cube has six faces. The vertex. The vertex is where uh, the edges meet. There are the corners. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. Now again, this isn't all of them, but these are the ones that I can see. How many vertices or vertexes does a cube have? There should be eight. There's one way in the back. Four up top and four on the bottom. There are eight vertexes, plural as vertices. I'm going to erase this stuff just so I have room for the edges. The edges are where the faces join together, or the seams. How many edges are there? There should be 12. Four in the front, one, two, three, four. Uh, four in the back, one, two, three on the bottom, four on the side, one, two, three, four around the middle. There are 12. Faces, flat pieces, vertices or vertex, the corners, edges, where the two faces come together, or I'm sorry, corners I said, it's the same as edges. So those are the three definitions we want to worry about when we talk a look, take a look at three-dimensional objects. Now let's clear that off. The next thing I want to show you is called a net. A net is a two-dimensional picture or a flat picture of a three-dimensional object. So imagine this, easiest way to imagine, if this was a cardboard box at your house and you cut it at the edge, what would it open into? If I would open this up, look like a cross. Bottom, side, side, 
front, back, and top. Watch again as I fold it up. It has to wrap around on top. So a real easy thing to check here is this. If you say how many faces does it have, if you remember we had six faces. Take a look. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this would be the net of a cube. Six faces folded up on top of each other. Now here's what I want you to do. You're going to get a piece of graph paper, you're going to cut out, and I want you to fold up. You're going to cut out a net so it folds up into a two by two cube. So when you are done, your cube should look like this. But you must draw out the net first. Draw out the net. That way when you cut it along the lines, you should be able to fold the net up so it makes a two by two cube. Two blocks wide, two blocks tall. When you're done, you're going to make sure your name gets on it and you're going to set it on my desk.